Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Race to 100. I am Rick Storsell. And I'm Neil Batan. And we are on episode number 82. 82? 82. Um, how does it go? Asam alaikum. Uh, alaikum salam? Uh, yes. We, uh, that was Rick and I attempting to speak a little bit of Arabic to our viewers out there. We know we've got a lot of people who follow us and especially those of the Arabic community. The reason why we wanted to start off speaking a little bit of Arabic is because the son of a fallen Muslim, excuse me, yes, the father of a fallen Muslim soldier had choice words to say to Donald Trump at the DNC this week. Uh, and we will show you a, a little clip of that right here. Donald Trump, you're asking Americans to trust you with their future. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? I will, I will gladly lend you my copy. In this document, look for the words, look for the words liberty and equal protection of law. Have you ever been to Arlington Cemetery? Go look at the graves of brave patriots who died defending United States of America. You will see all faiths, genders, and ethnicities. You have sacrificed nothing and no one. Have you read your constitution? <laughs> uh, that, that is a really bro. Man. Oh my goodness. That that made my that made my convention. That made your convention. <laughs> it was pretty yeah, it was pretty tight watching him do that, man, standing up for what he believes in. I I think the masses of America, those that um I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna say white people, but I will say the masses of America, obviously white people make the majority of the people in this country. And those who are in support of Donald Trump, we know you love your country, you love America, this, that, and the third. But a lot of them fail to realize or acknowledge the minorities that fought in wars, that served this country to obtain freedom. Yes. You know, freedom that you guys have been exercising and taking advantage of for, for hundreds of years without mm -hmm. complaining. Yeah. You know? And... And, 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 that's, and that's the thing, too, is that you see, again, the stark comparison that we've talked about a couple of times before yeah. between the, the RNC convention and the DNC convention. You had a lot of, I mean, they, they even, it's fear-mongering. I mean, basically, yeah. the, there's, there's this danger to the country, Islamic extremists coming over, uh, illegal immigrants crossing our border, and then you, you counter that with the image of sol soldiers of different faiths and ethnicities, uh, public servants, parents, you know, good, hardworking Americans, mm -hmm. which, you know, you, you, you do, I feel like they're, they're both sides tend to ignore the problems or great things that each side is trying to highlight. Yeah, yeah. And for me, anyway, I come down on the side of the, the vast majority of uh, immigrants to this country, whether they are Hispanic, whether they are Arabic, that a vast, vast majority, 99%, are good, hardworking Americans who do contribute to society and do sacrifice and do serve. Yeah, and absolutely. And to highlight this very small minority of, of bad seeds, which there are always going to be. There are just as many bad white people out there as there are bad minorities. Bad minorities. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think that it plays to this, this general sense of, of feeling. Mm -hmm. But when you have this father get up and talk about his son who died over a decade ago, you know, in, in Baghdad in, in 2004, it highlights just how far these people who, despite the demonization that they face, are willing to go to protect and serve this country that they love. And thank you for pointing that out, because that is my problem. Bricks, I will be completely honest, and I'm just going to say this on camera, I'm passionately against black men serving in the U.S. Army. Now, if that's the decision you decide to make, I'm not going to chastise you or judge you, but how I look at it is... 
I don't see how someone can fight for a country that has never fought for them. So you're taking a page out of Muhammad Ali? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. I, obviously not as um, not as deep and moving yeah. as Muhammad Ali made it out to be, but that's my personal stance on that. See, it, okay. like the Trump fans out there, they fail to acknowledge like that slaves fought in wars. Slaves with the incentive to be free fought in wars. The disenfranchised aka minorities of the United States of America are still fighting in wars mm -hmm. and they are putting their lives on the line and it just seems like the overwhelming population or majority don't even care like don't acknowledge that it's like why am I busting my butt for people who do not value my life at all say man I think the best part about it was when he pulled out his like his pocketbook of the U.S. Constitution. I was like, well, you are a political junkie. We've said this over and over again. Do you or have you ever encountered anyone who kept a copy of the U.S. Constitution um, on them at all times? I did. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. That's so true. you're one of those? But, you know, and that's one of those things, too, that a yeah. lot of people don't realize is that Immigrants to this country who become legal citizens know the Constitution better than us Americans. Than the American, oh, than the Americans that have lived here their entire lives. And it was it was interesting because there was also a side story on CNN that talked about how Donald Trump was talking to the Republican House members during their little summit thing, and they were asking him would he defend the the Articles of the Constitution, you know, the, the, you know, yeah, yeah. the Articles. Yeah. And he's like, of course, I'll, I'll defend Article One, I'll defend Article Two, I'll defend Article Twelve. Well, it turns out that there are only seven articles. So, so for the he, Trump supporters out there, it's just, it it's seems one of like those things, Donald but. Trump doesn't really know a lot of what he's talking about when it comes to the values well, of America. That's why it wasn't he doesn't the, know it all. It but, but, he's a, but he is a businessman. Immig immigrants are much much better informed yeah. than Americans, and they're, that is un undoubtedly true. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we salute you. Yes, um, to, to all Kazir Khan serve. and uh, everyone else out there. All, all the minorities, all ethnicities, whites, blacks, Muslims, Latinos, men, women, Asian, transgender, men, women, everyone who serves. We we we're very fortunate to be uh, in the position we are here today. Thank you for keeping us safe. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more access to episodes of Race to One Hundred. None of this would be possible without the contributions of our viewers and subscribers we appreciate everything that you do thank you for tuning in to another episode of race to 100 rex would you like to add anything else we'll be rocking you next time on race to 100 peace